Happy Saturday, everybody. You're welcome to the Today's Woman Show. My name is Renee Q. Boating, and it's going to be ever so stylish today. you find out why. We'll be right back. It's time for the woman on the move. She's a female entrepreneur, extremely driven. Let's see who she is. From prehistoric cave paintings to modern day film, art serves as a vessel for storytelling and conveying humankind's relationship with its environment. In the case of 32-year-old Esther Fusu, she was contacted by the Methodist Presbyterian Unit Chapel, Vota Barracks, to construct a concrete pulpit for the church. After the project, she was paid 6,000 CDs for her work, that further pushed her to put in her all and commercialize her works. I feel like my artwork is me, yeah. And me being African, it basically comes out through that form. Sometimes, yes, sometimes, no. And look creative in, such a, in, in the sense that if you have people coming to tell you that, okay, I want this artwork, do this for me, do, do that for me, that's when it becomes look creative. But if you sort of come out with your own thing and then you do your work and which has your own meaning, it's, it's not really uh, yeah. She currently teaches visual arts at St. George Grammar Senior High School and distance education at the University of Ghana, Legon. In order to change that narrative, what um, I do these days is that when the clients come around and they are like, okay, I want something to hang in my sitting room, I'm like, okay, it's not just anything, but what do you want to say? What you are going to hang in your sitting room should be able to say something, should, should be able to have something in connection with you. So with that kind of um, suggestion, I. I was able to get one or two people who were able to do artworks that say something about themselves or about an issue in their, in their life. One current example has to do with a client that I had. He was like, um, he wants an artwork that talks about X-ray because it's the nickname. He gave me the history behind his nickname. So it's kind of yeah, changing that narrative of just giving art to people as and so where we are currently standing is a car garage and uh, Esther has converted this into a personal studio. So everything happens here. You can call it the magic room. So you can see some of the words that she uses for her ways and it tells you how passionate she is about art. For Esther, she has never regretted venturing into the art despite its low appreciation. Sometimes because people are like, oh, she's a woman and they're like, okay, is she, is she going to do it? They try to judge your competence or something. So, so, um, I had one experience where I had to send, he wanted a drawing and I, I had to send samples of drawings more than five or six times to him and he was like saying again and all the stuff. So they tend to doubt your competence if they see that you're a woman and you're venturing into um, a man's world. So this very work we are you know, working on mm -hmm. is meant for Chaluwete, one of the greatest art festivals in Ghana mm -hmm. and it's slated for August at Jamestown and so this very piece here is going to be exhibited in August at Chaluwete. Business she says is seasonal but on good days she cashes in more particularly from Westerners who mostly request for abstract works. It's a bit difficult. Um, a bit difficult is that in the sense that it's not about producing the work. Yeah, you can get capital to start the work, but one other problem is how to do with uh, um, advertisement, how to ad advertise your business. Because when I, it was when I was doing the work for the, my first work that somebody was like, oh, okay, so do we have somebody like this in whole, you know, and like, oh, I'm surprised. So it's like, it has to do with the advert for the business you establish. But the, your, it all depends on your ability to advert for, um, for you to get more clients. In a world where social media is offering convenience to businesses and the likes, Esther tells me she never leaves it to chance. I have a, a, a platform on social media, basically Facebook, uh, where I post some of these works and then I also attach the meanings to the work. Sometimes I share my work with friends. Sometimes I place it on my status on WhatsApp. Sometimes I work alone with these ones, for instance, that you see on the wall. I do them alone, but when it has to do with sites, 
specific work uh, where I'll have to go and do the work, amount of work, and the work is very huge, then I call for people to help me. Yeah, I have one or two friends that come in to help me. She advises Ghanaians not to relent in inquiring about meanings of art as are mostly abstract in concept. You can have everything, but without passion, Esther stresses, anything you set your mind to do will be in vain. Art is a magical thing. Sometimes it requires a third eye to grasp these concepts. But one thing Esther is asking from government is that they need an art museum where they can showcase their works or even hold exhibitions because the private ones are very expensive. That will, in a way, promote art in Ghana and also make people appreciate art. And so we came to you from Esther Studio here at Tantra Hill. This is where she does everything here, her magic room. It's been so great and awesome. And thanks for watching. My name is Josh Quinning. I'm black and proud. <laughs> yeah, it has to do it. You know, people try to fancy. I know. And you know, anywhere somebody, a girl pass by with this kind of figure, you know, guess guys are... Our winning woman for today is Patience Ehi Odoko. She's here all the way from Abuja, Nigeria. She's a fashion designer, and I'm so glad to have her. One of my favorite fashion designers, I have to say. And I'm so glad to have her on the show today. Patience Akwaba. Medasi. Yay! She's got it. She's got it. She's got it. Welcome to Ghana. Thank you. Welcome, finally, to today's woman show. I'm yeah. so glad to have you on here. Now, I really wanted you to come and share your story because there's so much that I feel like the both of us have, like there's such a strong connection because we sort of have a same kind of story in a way. You know, I was in banking, I went into um, fashion, yeah. you were in banking. So I want you to tell us your story today. So again, welcome to Ghana. Thank and you. it's all about you today. You are a winning woman, okay? Mm -hmm. So tell us a bit about your career, how it started. Okay, um, so um, after uni, I got a job with a bank and um, I worked in the bank for three years okay. as um, a customer service representative. But even before I got into the bank, I knew I wanted to do fashion. Before I left school, I used to retail fabrics. And um, at some point in school, I won best dress in school. So I knew I had a thing for styling and then for sourcing for fabrics and all of that. So but going into the bank, I wanted to just learn the basic stuff on how to um, manage people, how to run a business and all of that. I had like that goal when I was joining the bank. But, um, so when I started working, I wanted to work for just like a year or two, but then I continued because I didn't have enough capital to start my business. But then while I was at the bank, I started working my business plan, started putting on them, um, requesting for grants and all of that. Oh, you did that? Yes, oh, while wow. I was in the bank. So um, my third year in the bank, I won a grant from the Nigerian government and that's how I was able to start my business and I left So the what bank grant is that and how do you apply for that? Tell us a bit about that grant. Um, it's called UWIN. It's um, a grant that is funded by um, World Bank and okay. the Ministry of Finance in Nigeria. Okay. Yes. And it's for any, any, any industry or yes. any business? Any oh, industry. that's fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. So that's what gave you the capital to actually to start, start my business. Yes. But then what was it like, you know, deciding to move from corporate to entrepreneurship and especially fashion because yeah. I, I don't know about Nigeria, but at the time that I was moving into it in Ghana, you know, it wasn't a sort of industry that was in quote respected, I should say. You know, I, I remember, and if my dad is watching, now he's not angry with me anymore, mm -hmm. but I remember at that time he was like, how can you leave a bank and go and sew? Yes. Or go and, you know, you know, you know that kind of <laughs> That's thing. That's the same thing with you my know, dad. So what was it like there? It, for me, it, in Nigeria, it's, everybody loves fashion. And then the African fashion is really are, are, you, are you telling now. us? Are you? 
African fashion is trending. But then, so when I was going to leave the bank and then start doing my business fully, my dad said, oh, so after going to school, you want to become a trader. Yeah. But then that's it's something I love to do. And then I just wanted to just, I naturally like to do business. So not just fashion. I have other plans in the future that I would get into. But then for now, I'm doing fashion. But then, so leaving the banking job was easy for me because I didn't want to stay there from day one. So it's, as soon as I got the grant, I'm like, okay, so I'm done. And I dropped my letter. So you're just started. waiting for the grant, basically. Yes, I was just was waiting that, Was it a good it. amount to set you off? It wasn't like enough for the picture and the dream I have for myself already. But then it was enough for me to start something. I can remember that's the why, first that's day. That's why I'm asking you that. Yes. I'm so glad you said this. Because so many people have such a strong vision, such a strong dream. Yes. And they haven't started yet because they feel like they don't they have it all it. yet. Yes, they but feel you... like they need enough money to start. Yeah. But you really don't. I can remember when I opened my place the first day in October 2016. I had not even one naira left in my bank account. And I'm, I didn't know any. I just knew my, maybe my family members and my friends. And I'm like, okay, so I'm open. Let's start. I didn't have a good tailor. I don't know how to sew, but then I totally love fashion. So I was hoping I would employ someone who would be able to manage that for me, and then all I'll do is manage the whole detailing and making sure I design okay. and all of that. So, but then I started that day, and then no money, but I knew that I, this was going to turn out to something really good. And that was it. Did you and ever, at, at, no at a point, point, feel like, let me stop this? Never. Yes, I get overwhelmed sometimes when like, things are not well done because I'm very particular about excellence. So when things are not well done, I get overwhelmed. But then um, I keep pushing and I tell myself, you need to keep learning every day to become better. Because Have you learned how to sew yourself? I am going to eventually. But okay. then I keep reading and learning things on YouTube. And that's how I've been able to grow the business, really. I've not gone to a proper fashion school. Wow. Yes. So for now, what you're doing is actually just designing, designing and styling. Designing and styling, And yes. then you have people who, who make the clothes yes. and all yes. that. Yes. So you started with a menswear, which really yes. surprised me, actually. I mean, when I met you and I saw, I, I, I mean, I, of course, your menswear design is so, so, so beautiful. Like, I love the fit and the look on the man. Like, you know, the way you put it together. Mm -hmm. You know, and my husband will be rocking it soon. <laughs> you know, so I really, really like that. But I was just wondering as well, but why have you left the women and you're with the men? Because men are not as impulse buyers as we yes, are. And they're not as like, you know, they won't buy 10 pieces at a time. Mm -hmm. You know, so why, you know, why, the, why okay. is the focus on men? Yes, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to stand and I wanted to change the narrative in the fashion industry. So it's not me just, okay, because I'm a female, so because of that, I should also be doing fem um, women's wear. Mm -hmm. For me, it was not really because I'm a female. So I'm starting that, I'm doing the whole men's wear because I wanted to change the narrative. And I like mm. the fact that some men don't really know how to place colors, wear the right cuts, or know that they need to keep it simple for them to stand out. Right. So I wanted to bring that right. too. Yes, and so yeah. all of my designs are a bit simple, not too loud, and then the colors are also like subtle, so it just fits, and I, I help it so, okay, your color, you, because you're dark, you should wear this sort oh, of so color. Oh, so you actually, you actually, I do, do they like actually have a consultation? consultation? Yes. Okay, yes. Yes. okay. And are you able to like, you know, like explain their body shape and yes. tight? Because yes. yes. sometimes, you know, Af African men. They want it with, tight, so you, you see know, they, You know the U pack. <laughs> You know, there's a six pack and there's a yes, U there's pack. Yes, there's a U pack. Yeah. yeah so, you like, so are you able that. to like talk to them and let them yes. understand what will fit the what and all that? And they are yes. willing to learn. Totally. Okay, totally. that's fantastic. But some people insist, no doubt. Some people insist, oh, and I want it really fitted, but I will. It won't be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> so then, what led you to Ehi? So you have the Fabric Hub, yes. which is the menswear line, yes. and then you've now started a female yes. um, line. Of which I, I own quite a few pieces, yeah, if, if I should say. <laughs> <laughs> so Ehi is something that I'm totally passionate about. And <clears throat> Ehi came about when I started discovering myself. So as a la two years ago, I um, joined a particular group, a women empowerment group, and I just started going through this journey of personal um, discovery, discovering mm. myself and understanding who I am. And then um, with my growing up, I am... Um, I didn't have like a lot of guidance. So it was just like me alone growing, learning, observing people. I'm from a very large home. So um, when I was going to school, I was 16 when I was going to school and I literally went to school alone in a city what I didn't know. School? University? University, yeah. Okay. And I didn't know anybody there. So I was just on my own. I had so many experiences. I just had to grow on my own. So seeing that and then going to the point where I am now, I feel there's so many young people who are also going through that mm. and don't have guidance, they're not bold enough to talk. That affected my self-confidence and a whole lot of mm. things, which mm. I'm, I'm trying to like grow out of it. Mm -hmm. So um, 
That's what, can you give us some examples? What, what would you say, you know, you said you went through so many things. I mean, if you can, and if you're comfortable doing that. But what yeah. would be something that maybe somebody watching can resonate with and say, oh, I know what she means. You know, I know what you mean. And I didn't even know that I shouldn't be growing alone like this. Mm -hmm. Because some people are actually thinking that, that this is what family is like. This is what growing up is like. Yeah. They don't even know that they need to be guided on this and this yes. and that. Yes, yes. You know. So, um... First, when I was 16, I actually got raped when I was 16, and that's because I didn't have anybody to say, okay, this is this, this is life. In as much as it was not me making myself vulnerable mm -hmm. to that person, but then I was in a position where I had to stay with some people who I didn't even know because mm -hmm. I was still looking for a space Do you want to talk about in school. You know, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> I was still looking for a space then, and then I was staying with my, my brother's friend, and he had his friends around, he had his girlfriend around, and I was 16 in that place beautiful <laughs> thank did you did you report did you report it i mean i'm so so so, so because sorry. so that's the reason why i say people uh, african parents don't let you talk you don't have sisters who are asking you questions and all of that i um we don't, i don't have a great relationship with my dad because he's so busy and all of that and then he doesn't he's not available for all of us by a lot so there's really nobody to talk to so i just went through all of that alone Mm. Nobody knew about it. Nobody knew what I was going through in school and all of that. But, but, but then so today I'm here and then I'm much better. I've healed from it on my own. But then I can yeah. do that because I was able to talk to a few people eventually about it, that this is what I went mm. through. This is what happened when I was this age and all mm. of that. Yeah. But what do you, I mean, this, I'm, I'm so, so sorry, seriously. I'm really sorry to hear this. But in a way, I'm also angry, you know, because there's so many young women and even men as well get raped yes there yes, are so yes. many men that you speak to today they who will tell you that they were molested yes. and raped by their house nannies helps, and all of that nannies yes. maybe older cousins yeah. there was this one man i was speaking to one time and i was just teasing him and telling him about how men like women too and he actually said he didn't like women you know n not that he liked men but he wasn't a womanizer mm -hmm. you know and he said that he'd been abused i mean i was shocked yeah at the, at the age of, I think, eight or nine, he said he would come back from school and his older cousins will have she and three of her friends yes. waiting for him. That, that is, I think, it's, it's atrocious. It's terrible. And it happens to a lot of men. So it's about told time we start talking story. about it, it. Yes. Yes, so that's the thing. So and what is the culture be... like in Nigeria? Because here, a lot of um, um, people who go through things like this they won't come out and speak because of stigmatization. Yes, that's the thing. You so know, people, people will look at you funny and say, oh, yeah. and interpret it in so many other yeah. ways and everything, yeah. Yeah. Now, what is it like if you had gone to tell your parents or you had told somebody older, you know, what, what would have been, how would they have addressed it? Maybe arrest the guy and all of mm. that, but then maybe take me to a but therapist. But do you think it's too late? But so you know how it is in Africa. So how, what evidence would you get? Mm. How would you show? How what would you prove to say, okay, this yeah. happened to me? If so I reported immediately, mm. this, like, like the next day when it happened, it would mm. have been easier. So the hospital can say, okay, this happened. There was force and all of that. But then if the, nothing happened, so that's it. You don't have any evidence to really say. It's just right. my story. Let's talk and about the healing process. I like that you said I've healed through it. Yeah. Would you say you've healed through it? And how did you... I, I only healed through it recently mm. because I, at some point I had to go and really pray to God and like, just ask God to help me clear my head. In as much as it's hard, there are days when I still sit down. And like recently with the whole happening in Nigeria, it has really affected me because like, every day when I see something about it, I always just go emotional, like right now. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it, it's not easy. It's really a difficult thing. But then you really need to decide, especially the fact that I've discovered myself and I feel really powerful with myself and especially having you around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. yeah, like, this is what, but this is what women are there for each other for, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. You know, that we really need to, you know, lift each other up. We really yeah. need to empower each other. We really need to encourage each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, women watching, um, you know, everybody watching, I mean, I'm almost getting emotional myself, but we really, really need to focus and, and, and make, I mean, we, oh, goodness, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs>
So thank you so much for sharing this with us, mm -hmm. um, um, Patty. And if I can ask, how did you heal? You said you've come to a place where you feel like you've healed. How did you heal? Um, I healed after discovering myself because I feel most times um, when you discover yourself and then you're working in purpose, you sort mm -hmm. of all what you've been through is for a reason. Mm -hmm. So going through all of this now, I know that there are other people who are going through it and there are other people who need to hear something so they don't find themselves in that in position. position. And that's why I um, started EHI. And then EHI, is, EHI has also a foundation called Enlightened High Initiative. So the whole essence of that initiative is to inform young girls that you can be powerful, you can stand out. People need to understand that they are powerful, they are light, they carry so many, so many unique things in them that they don't know. And then because they don't discover themselves on time, they feel so not worthy, not enough. So I like to use that phrase, you are enough. This is something that I've discovered and then you've taught me also a lot around that. And to understand that you are powerful, you're light. God prepared you and sent you to this world for a purpose. But when you don't know all of that, you just feel so little with yourself. Yeah. And then that's the whole essence of that foundation. And then that's the essence of Ehi, the brand itself, the ready to wear line. So we're using 10% of our profits to empower wow, young girls. I was just so going to ask yes. yeah, if there's anything going yes. from there yes, into... that's it. Oh, and that's then that's fantastic. why all of our pieces are also sending a message, telling mm. you that you're powerful. You don't yeah. need to expose your body. You don't need to sell your body. You don't need to be little. You don't need to show yourself off for you to stand out and to yeah. still live yeah. on top. So you can be covered from head to toe and, and still, still be, be a amazing. powerful, yes. sexy woman. Yes. Yes. You know, what is your definition of sexy, actually? Let me ask you this. Because, like, you know, when you talk about sexy, because a lot of women want to be sexy, mm -hmm. okay, but... When they talk about sexy, you, you, you know, it's not like they're naked. Yeah, no, it's You know, not. I don't know if your definition is nakedness. No, I don't think all. nakedness is sexy. It's not. But what, what would you say, what is your definition of a powerful woman who can also be a sexy woman? Someone who is all covered up, who understands her purpose, who understands that she is light. But you know what? You can understand all of that, but if you don't build yourself, you cannot really stand up and say I am powerful so mm -hmm. you need to when you discover yourself you want to be powerful you need to keep building yourself also mm -hmm. you need to keep developing yourself mm -hmm. and then when you want to dress up you want to wear pieces that are comfortable mm -hmm. you want to wear colors that really make you stand out so it's not every skin color that can wear a yellow and still look right. good right right yes and then you want to wear pieces that just make you comfortable so if you're dragging and they're making yours everywhere you go you're pulling down the skirt then you can't be sexy <laughs> that way <laughs> so it's actually about knowing your body, appreciating yes, your body, yes. and dressing well in comfortable pieces. pieces. That can make you, that can give you the confidence. Yes, totally. I remember one time I went to an event and um, there was a time for question and answers and you had to come to the front to, 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 to um, answer the question or to share a, 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 a comment. And one lady said, oh, if she had known, she that, awesome do you understand? <laughs> and, and so every time I go and I'm speaking at different places and talking about image and confidence and all that, I always say, dress in a way, mm -hmm. carry yourself in a way, and look at yourself, imagine yourself that you are in front yes. all the time. So there shouldn't be, this is my back, outfit and this yeah, is my front outfit at and then at any point you can be called mm -hmm. and you also have to carry yourself in a way that in the next 10 15 years you don't know who you're going to become that's the thing that's the thing you know you don't want to look back and think to yourself oh. now if there's somebody watching okay who probably follows you there's so many people who you've got so many admirers in mm. ghana now you recently had a pop-up event yes. which was so great and there are many more coming up so you know i'm sure people following you will be getting up getting all the details on the things that you're going to be doing in Ghana very soon. Yeah. Let me even ask, what brought you to Ghana? You seem to love our country. I love, love, love tell, Ghana. Tell us, tell us, what brought you to Ghana? I love Ghana. Ghana, you guys are so warm, so welcoming. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Let, yeah. Let's toast to that, <laughs> to our let's, warm. Let's toast to more, more <laughs> moments in Accra. <laughs> more moments in Accra. Mm -mm. Mm, this is lovely. Thank you so much. This is from the one to one bar here at the Move and Pick Ambassador Hotel. I know you've been to a few hotels here in Accra. Yeah. And I mean, every time you're like, I'm coming to Ghana, I'm coming to Ghana, I'm like, <laughs> wow. You really love our country yes, and we yes, love you yes, too. Yes. Thank you so much for, you know, opening up and sharing this. Not a lot of people do that. So it really means a lot to me. I'm actually really moved. Why? Because I feel like somebody watching, you have saved somebody's mm -hmm. life. 
by you coming out, you saved somebody's life. So now they, are, they, are, they, are, they can probably say to themselves that it wasn't my fault. Yeah. A lot of people feel like it's their fault. They are meant to believe it. You know, that it's not, it mm -hmm. wasn't your fault. Yeah. You know, you need to heal and become you. Yes. Find your purpose. I like that you talked about purpose. How would you, I mean, you said since you found your purpose. So how did you know that that was your purpose? Because I just do it effortlessly. Effortlessly, everything I do. So do it, especially with the foundation. Starting the foundation, starting the ready to wear line has given me so much joy. And it just mm. feels so happy seeing women when they wear my pieces, they are happy. They are so happy to shop. So you still, you still do the men though? Yes. I mean, yes, that is yes. your main focus. That is still my your main, main focus. Business. Okay, yeah. okay. That's but then the women, you know, women, you know how we are. You guys I mean, are even, always ah! shopping. <laughs> we come to buy one and then we end up in three. Yeah. You know, where we look at it and see and everything. But your designs, I mean, anytime I wear your pieces, oh. I have to say, people ask me all the time. Oh. Like, well, I love yeah. the fit. Um, I think you understand the African body, yes. which is what I like. Yes. Yes. And you're yes. able to accentuate the curves, but with decency. You know, and, and mm -hmm. that I, I really, really, res that's why I res respect and love your brand so, so, so much. Now, what is, what is it like dealing with competition? I don't know what it's like in, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nigeria will even be tougher <coughs> because you are many, many, you know, much more. But here in Ghana, you know, like sometimes it's a, a, a lot of designers find that, you know, they can't work well with others. Sometimes they even give up because of competition. What, what yeah. do you think when it comes to competition? Competition would always be there but then you need to find your uniqueness. So what exactly are you doing that's different from every other person? Mm -hmm. So is it your fabrics, is it the cuts, mm -hmm. is it the feet? Mm -hmm. So you need to just find something. Competition would always be there. And you know sometimes your competitors actually copy. Yeah. That, that is even what but is So even... you want to do designs that are really, really a bit difficult. So maybe yeah. even if they copy your designs, but they can't get the same fabric. Yeah. They can't mm. get the cut. They can't get mm. the finish. So you go out and you source the fabric I take yourself. my time. That's my, like, that's the part, best part of my job. Wow. <laughs> well, actually going out to going get Going out the to fabric. get fabric. So yeah, that eventually. people who don't really want your designs can actually, totally. actually you yes. know, have the fabric That's too. the big picture for the fabric hub. The right. fabric hub is meant to be a one-stop shop for every type of okay. fabric, even for furniture. Oh yeah, wow, that's the big picture. and everything. Yes, yes. And that would be in Abuja. Yes, that would in be in Nigeria. Abuja. Well, yes. and I'm sure you'll be opening a branch in, in Accra. Very hey, soon. hey, <laughs> hey, 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 well done, well done. That, yeah. That's really, really, um, you know, I, I absolutely i am so um, uplifted, you know, and really encouraged by your message today. I can't thank you enough. Now, what do you think about, you know, role modeling and mentorship? You know, what do you, what, what do you think about it? What advice do you give to women out there regarding, you know, maybe having a role model or having a mentor? Yeah, it is really vital for you to have a mentor. It's mm -hmm. vital for you to, it's vital for you to have someone that you mirror and then you want to be like. For me, that has really helped me a lot in the past year because I just focus on, okay, so I want to be like this person. I want to become better than this person eventually. Mm -hmm. And mm. I like mirror them, I follow them on Instagram, I go to their events and I learn every day from them. Mm. So it's really important, if, especially when you know who you want to become and you're clear about where you want to go, then it's always good to find someone who has gotten to that point. Mm. And then you start watching what they do, how they behave, events that they go for. People like that are always developing themselves. So if you right. want to be there, then you need to also right. invest in personal development. So it's yeah. really important for you to have a mentor. Yeah. I have so many mentors. You're one of my mentors. Oh, you wow. Know that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. But you know, one thing that I have to say when it comes to mentorship and role modeling that people should also be aware of is that, you know, your role model or your mentor is a human being. Yes. And it's yes, not perfect. Yes, yes, yes. You know, so you might, you know, be disappointed sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like when you say like, you know, you want to be like, it's not, I don't think it's everything about the person, no, totally, right? Totally, totally. But you, you pick things that, things that would, and that is yeah. what like maybe is your benchmark. That's what yes, you're working towards. Yes, yes. You know, otherwise, you know, it's, it's, it's almost like even being a Christian, you know, you can hear something that will take you out of Christianity, but shouldn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, who are you following? What are you following? So it's really, really important that, you know, when you have a mentor, when you have a role model, yeah. you are, you are, you are, you are modeling Something Certain things. and not, not everything. everything. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. because nobody is perfect. Nope. Yeah, yes. people always make would... mistakes, and yeah, 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 yeah. and then that could just like you know, mm -hmm. you know. So, mm -hmm. do you mentor others as well? Yes. So recently, have... I said I accepted mentors because I feel at some point I felt like okay, look, I'm not there yet. I'm still building myself. I'm still learning, so I don't want to give you any information that is not correct. But then I've invested a lot in building myself for the past two years. 
and so I'm ready to give back. It's more like give back. So now. if somebody, so say you met somebody who you went to school with maybe seven years ago, mm -hmm. okay, what is it about then that they won't see now? You know, you said you've developed yourself. What is the change? They won't see Let's me. say a before and after. <laughs> what would be if it was weight loss? The pictures are there. This is actually you. Yeah. So what can you say has changed? Okay. From my communication skills, that's one major thing for wow. me. Okay. I can remember growing up, and when I was 10, I couldn't even write certain things and spell or pronounce certain things. Mm. I'm not perfect yet because I didn't go to a great school mm. coming up, um, growing up and all of that. And it really, I can remember when I was in JS2, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what you guys call it, but in college. So um, my teacher told me, you're so dumb, you're so slow, you will they never ever. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, look how you look so hopeless and all of that. Those words. So because of that, I'm constantly reading. I'm constantly, I'm like, no, I cannot be seen that way anymore. Yeah, yeah. And then even sitting down and having this chat with you, as a last year, I won't be able to do it. Mm. I'll be so freaking shy and I will not be. <laughs> so but I can do this now. So and this is true. coming on TV3, okay? Number one in news, best in entertainment. You need to go back to Nigeria and let them know. <laughs> yeah, so. You've done such, such. You know, I, well, I think I've, I've known you for about maybe a year or yeah. two. And recently, I, I was um, on a program on Instagram. You, were li you, were, you did a live. Um, yes. I told you after, I said, I'm so impressed. I was like, I was watching. I was in Ghana clapping <laughs> as if you would hear. But I just loved it because even within the year, I didn't know about your past. I didn't know what you've been, but I had just seen sort of a boldness coming out that wasn't there before. And that is what it should be like with everybody out there. You know, so yeah, somebody may have called you dumb before. Mm -hmm. Somebody may have said you were the hopeless person, lazy. But it's about time you have to prove them wrong. You don't have yeah. to take it and accept it that and say, yes, it. I'm dumb. That's no, they have to see you and think, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. why did I even ever say that? Yeah. You know, so I think you've done a great, great, great job. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Now for people out there who are still thinking that the fashion industry, what do you think about the fashion industry in Africa? Let me, let me ask you this first. So the fashion industry in Africa is what actually going global. You think so? Yes, yes. So recently, if you um, if you follow the fashion trend, Dior had their um, resort collection, and they use African prints in like almost yeah. all of their designs. Yeah. So that's to show how powerful our prints are. Mm. So it's it's interesting where we're going to, and people are improving in as much as we have certain things that we really need to work on. What are some of the things you think? Like we need the to? sizing. So yes. because we need to come yes. up with like yes. an African size. Yes. Because we're yes, not the true, same with the true. European body at all. We're yeah. not the same with the US body. Yeah. So yeah. we need to come up. That's one thing we need to work on. There's someone who is working on it in Nigeria currently, okay. which I'm trying to partner with. So we would see how that comes up. So then it's like an <coughs> African, like, so how they yes. have Europe size, Europe UK size, so you have, US, we have, we have African size. Yes, because yes. our bodies are in the same. Totally. Because I struggle all the time when I'm buying clothes. Mm -hmm. The top part has to be smaller yeah, than the, and then the, the, the bottom yeah, part. Yeah. And you can't just get like a UK this and mm -hmm. it will fit that's you true. properly. Yes, yes. yes. So. With our height and all, that would mm -hmm. be fantastic actually. Yeah. That would be a great, great, great selling point. That is fantastic. Now there's so many, like <coughs> everybody's asking, how come I'm always going to Nigeria? That's what they're saying. How come I'm always, and how come Nigerians are also always oh, coming yeah. to Ghana? Yes. So what do you think is like the, the love or the synergy between mm. Ghana and Nigeria? What do you think? We just have, there's just something about us. We just were always so clearly, there's, there's a room for us to collaborate on so many things mm. because we love what's happening there. We also love what's happening here. So I think we should start thinking of how to collaborate and bring Ghana and Nigeria together. <laughs> so patients, what are your, if you can share, if, if they're not secrets, what are some of the future plans okay. you have? And another question I want to ask is the economy in Africa. How do you think it's affecting us as entrepreneurs, you know, our growth? Mm -hmm. So um, around future plans. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm working on a um, platform. Mm -hmm. It's called um, Emerging Designers Hub, which um, is going to help African designers more like new designers are coming up. Because growing, starting my business, my business is just three years, but then it's still a small business, but I don't picture it as a small business. But and so there's so many small businesses that are fantastic, but people mm -hmm. don't know about them. Yeah. So what the Emerging Designers Hub would do for it is, they'll bring them out and then take them global. Okay. So it's a platform that will be open and will get people from London, everywhere who want to buy so like African you pieces. You how does it work? So it's going to be a platform, an e-commerce platform. Okay. And then you can register your brand. Would we'll register oh, emerging designers okay. for free. Okay. So it's almost like like um, like a directory 
of design. Yes, and then no, have and have all their pictures, all their products on the okay. platform. And it would have a factory that we can manufacture for any designer who does not have a factory yet, who does not have the resources ah. and the capital to do all of that. And it will manufacture and for you. And you're doing this from, from, from Nigeria? From Nigeria. So okay. yes, that for me is supposed to help with the employment rate. Mm. So there's so many people who just sit around and say, well, I don't have a job. Yeah. I don't know this. I can't do this. I don't have resources to do yeah. this. But they are, they are amazing. They can sew. They can mm. design. They can mm. sketch. How do you source for your tailors and your, your, your seamstresses? How do you source for oh, them? They're in Nigeria. There are, there are many of them in Nigeria. Yeah, there are many of them in yeah. Nigeria. Now, how how easy or difficult is it when you know <laughs> when you're actually um, the head of a business that you cannot do yourself in a way? Mm -hmm. Because you know sometimes and it happens a lot. You, I've heard so so many stories yeah. where sometimes some of the workers can come together and decide to leave on it on a, on the same day. Yeah. You know, it's happened in the beauty industry, in the hairdressing industry, like, you know, sewing, yeah. catering, you know. So you can't do it on your own. Mm -hmm. If you have 10 orders, even if you can sew yourself as well, you, can handle you can't that. handle yes. it all. You need yeah. the workers. Yes. And this is a culture where sometimes some of them can come together and think she's taking all the money, he's let's taking go. all the money. Yeah. Let's just come to, let's leave and go and do our own thing. Now, have you, do you think in that way as well? Have you projected you know, are there any like, you know, emergency plans or anything just in case? Yeah. What would you do in a, in a situation like that? So um, for me, I've been able to build like my relationship with some people they call agents that handle tailors. Okay. Okay. So no matter what, at every point. Also, there are agents in, in yes, Nigeria that do that. That do that. That can source for tailors room from Togo. Business Kota, ideas. Anywhere. Are you listening? Yeah. Somebody, you, you so have to start there. it as well. Tell mm -hmm. us, what is it? So he's just an agent who handles, he has all the contacts of all the good tailors or all the tailors that come so into town. So tailors from other countries? From other countries, okay. yeah. Okay, so when you so need him, you, you just need, go to you that? You just call him and say, okay, I okay. need a tailor. I, but then does it mean that you have to, like, you, you have to take care of the accommodation and all that? So if you want the really fantastic ones that are going to come from out of country, you have to get a place for them to stay. Wow. And then you have to pay the agent, so it's not free. Yes, yes, because that's how they're also making their... <laughs> yeah, that's their, how they make their money. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's really good. Mm. So at least you can, like, there and there. So do you have, how are you able to... Because one difficult thing and one thing that a lot of people complain about, um, African, I want to say African, we're talking about Nigeria, we're yeah. talking about Ghana, Togo, mm -hmm. you know, everywhere. African designers, is sometimes you can't have... Their pieces are not, like, staple pieces. Mm -hmm. So you're wearing this, I know you made this, yeah. I can ask for it, and you can't produce the same, the same thing, thing for me. And that becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. But this is not what you were wearing. This is not what you made for me. I just yeah. said I wanted another color. Yeah. Why is it different? Yeah. So do you have templates That's that true. you work with, or how, how are you to able to get the exact the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. So at some point when I started, I didn't realize that I needed to have like patterns mm. set for each design. I'll just do, okay, make this design and then, okay, make another piece and it never comes out the same way. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so I need to look for a solution for this. Mm. So now every design I make, I try to make like a pattern for it. So if we need right. to go back to it in 10 years, we can just take that yeah. and still do it. Yeah. So it's important yeah. to have that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Awesome, amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Now there's this one thing that I have started doing, okay? I'm encouraging women to love themselves, no matter what you've been through. Because um, sometimes, uh, some people I've spoken to who don't love themselves, a lot of the time is because of things they've been through or things they've been told. Yeah. So sometimes, you know, in some homes, people who live, who grew up in maybe compound homes, you know, so you have little children all playing together or huge families, mm -hmm. you get teased a lot. Look at her big forehead and look at her leg and look at her this and look at her that. And that's what you heard growing up. So that's what resonates, you know, that's all you hear in your mind all the time. So you look in the mirror and it's like the forehead, the eyes, the big nose, the this, the that, the that, the that. So a lot of women are battling with low self-esteem, Yes. are battling with like, you know, having no confidence or little confidence, are battling with insecurities, looking at themselves in the mirror and not being able to tell themselves you are beautiful mm -hmm. or you are amazing, yeah. you are doing a great job, you are inspiring so many other people, you are a blessing. They can't even say that mm -hmm. to themselves. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I've started. It's a self-love movement. I'm pushing it. Like I'm encouraging every woman to always, always look at yourself and say something mm -hmm. great to yourself. I mean, don't wait for me to tell you. There's so yeah. many great things I can tell you about you, but what can you say about yourself? Why? If nobody else is around to say mm -hmm. that and you are 
going through like a down period, yeah. you should be able to it's lift yourself up. Yeah. You should be able to lift yourself up. So I have a little present for you. Yay. Yay. <laughs> a little surprise. This is the Rene Q's love Aww. pillow. Okay. Now this is a squeezy little cuddly. It's just a pillow, right? But I just want you to always remind yourself of something that you love about yourself every time you see it. And that's the whole, it's like, so basically a visual reminder of how unique and special you are. So anytime you see it, anytime you hold it, anytime you squeeze it, mm -hmm. it's for you to tell yourself one thing you love about yourself. And you keep telling yourself and telling yourself, you start believing it and your confidence starts building up and you come out, the you that you are. So this is a gift from me to you, yeah, okay? You. And I want you to tell us one thing and this it's just coincidental yeah, that it's, sure you didn't it goes, my... I, didn't, I didn't know what you're going to wear. <laughs> But okay. you know, it's just about having the, the stylish spirit. Yeah. Then you just know what to pick. <laughs> so tell us one thing you love about you. Mm. Thank you so much for You're this. You're welcome. Um, one thing I love about myself the most is, gosh, I love so many things about myself. <laughs> so I love the fact that I am so driven. I'm naturally just motivated and I just want to win. Every morning when I wake up, I just want to keep winning and keep building and keep impacting. That for me mm. is when I know that I am successful, when I've impacted someone, when someone says, oh wow, thanks for sharing this thing, thanks for telling me this, thanks for doing that. So I like the fact that I am driven and I'm very particular about impact. Thank you so much, Renee. And I love you too, <laughs> I have to say. I love, you I love you so, so, so much. We'll be right back before I start crying. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today on the Today's Woman Show. Don't miss it next week, Saturday at 11 a.m. on TV3 and DSTV channel 279. This is an amazing show. Today, I'm, I mean, I was so, so, so emotional, but I was, I'm also really, really empowered and inspired to do more, to uplift more women out there. And you can do it as well by sharing your story, by encouraging somebody else, sometimes by even holding the hand of the woman next to you. You are today's woman and you should do this. Many thanks to my sponsors without whom this show won't be possible. Thank you so much to the Movipic Ambassador Hotel, the one-to-one -one bar. Thank you to GTP, thank you to Yaz, and also to the Rene Q Love Pillow for empowering women and encouraging women to love themselves. You are today's woman and you must love you. See you next week and stay blessed.